It takes time, effort, and a great deal of trial and error for creative people to make great work. And every time we fail at landing that client we wanted, didn't get a call back from an interview, or simply not get the recognition for our hard work, it feels like a slap in the face. It feels like we just can't get out of a rut. Well, in this video today, we're gonna get on call with my lead designer, Tyler B, and we're gonna discuss why so many young artists are having trouble standing out and actions they can take to improve their current circumstances. And if you stay to the end, I'll have all the notes from this video up on screen. So let's begin. All right, hey guys, I got uh, Tyler B or Tyler Bourne with us tonight and we work together every day. We do, do client projects. He's been doing great work and he's gonna be, one of the reasons we got him on tonight because he's was a, a student much more recently than me. He's got you now like three years of professional experience. So we've got his insight on things and he's got a lot of experience in a very short amount of time and has developed very quickly. So I think he'd be a great perspective to get on the show. So that's one reason I got you on tonight. And the other reason is too, because you're going to be doing, I, if, if things go according to plan, you're going to be, you know, returning on the channel more frequently. So we wanted to give another, again, like a brief, a bit of an introduction on our end. So why don't you just give everybody a, a short spiel on yourself for those that aren't familiar with you. Yeah, so my name is Tyler Bourne, and um, as Tyler mentioned, I started taking classes at CGMA um, quite a few years ago, kind of staggered them in my free time, um, and uh, yeah, took Tyler's class, and then um, eventually started working with Tyler on um, some with on some client stuff with um, Epic Games and some Blizzard stuff and some smaller indie studios and um, just progressing through both client work and constantly taking online classes, um, trying to improve myself and getting into the industry and getting more um, experience. I mean, at the time, this is gonna be a big topic today, guys, is just having, a, you had a student level portfolio, but again, this is like three years ago and I think even things have changed quite a bit in the last three years. Uh, wouldn't you say in regards to like the level of quality and the demand of jobs is, is quite shifting all the time. Yeah, absolutely. The scope of everything is changing. The technology has changed even in the last three years. You know, that's that's partly why you need to stay on top of it and you're, yep. you take take tutorials and classes because there's always something new to learn. Uh, so it's, a, it's always going to be a huge learning curve. Um, but that consistency, like you said, I, there's more to it than just um, skill like there a lot of soft skills comes into it like communication like you said consistency and just showing up I think that you know I like I'm the first to admit that I'm not the most skilled artist but hopefully I show up but I think that um, in the end it's it's a better bet to have somebody that you you know you can rely on delivering yep. you know quality work that that you know what you're going to get rather than an incredible person that might be less consistent in their work yeah, but i think we're we are going to isolate a little bit more of the technical today and just focus on aspects that you and i are just observing and we're going to show a lot of this on screen like what we observe from artists that we admire artists that we think are very successful and like what separates a lot of their typical work from the standard student stuff and I think the first big thing is, of course, there's with a student portfolio, and this is something I've seen with everybody that had emailed me this week, is that there's a lot of limited exploration in that original portfolio. And so what I'm talking about is a, it's too textbook in execution. It's too by the numbers. Um, a lot of students are just going through the check boxes. Okay, I've got a turnaround. I've got a call out. I have an interior, an exterior. I have a couple mood shots. I have a few sketches. But right, like that, that's what we learn in class. That's what they've trained us to do. But that's not good enough in 2023 to stand out, right? And like we yeah. see a lot of these, a lot of the work I saw, a lot of the questions asked like, how old were you, you know, when I started or or what was it like when I started? And honestly, every student that's ever asked me that, I'm like, well, you're better right now than I was when I started. And just because like the bar of, of or 
just because the standards were so different 12 years ago, um, yeah, you could kind of get in with a decent or moderate portfolio, but it's changed. Arnold's work demonstrates nicely and in a variety of ways all the fundamentals, but it still certainly has that starter portfolio feel to it as many of the pieces have that classroom-like assignment feel to them. And honestly, in today's market, it really needs to transcend that and go far beyond. Secondly, it's also so diverse, you know, with an equal emphasis on all these genres and categories that it really is not showing what his strength or true passion is. It's just not obvious. Arnold or anyone in a similar position, don't stop creating. Focus on what you find exciting and new. Develop your strength and let that type of art dominate and take over this very balanced portfolio. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, like t the, I think the technology has helped too, and the fact that, you know, this, like, th there's, there's a new field essentially in teaching this stuff. Like, there's a lot of these professionals who got in a decade or two ago who are now teaching it, and there's so many students that, like, the the content is there for you to learn where it probably wasn't when you were getting in the no. industry so you've got a lot of young people just learning like learning everything sort of the easy way not not that it's an easy no. road but certainly being able to learn from other people's mistakes yep. um for free basically or or very cheap uh, online it's it's the barrier of entry is so much lower and that just makes all of the skill, all of the work that you see professionals doing, the the quality just skyrockets. So um, we need we need to keep up with that. Yeah. So like right in regards to limited exploration, I, I this is what we're talking about. It's like applying the fundamentals that people are learning from all these tutorials and basically trying more to experiment and push your own boundaries. There was this literal, uh, literally one of the guys that had sent me his work last week. I could identify every tutorial that he followed for all his portfolio, uh, portfolio pieces. Like, oh, like here's so and so's tutorial. He, you did this one on this guy's. This one was the John Park one. This this one was, you know, like, like you could go through almost by the numbers. And I think that's great because you learned a lot of skills from each of these tutorials. But now you like you almost got to let it go and then completely like uh, unlearn part of that so you can uh, try to apply it in a in a completely different way. And I think part of that is just like identifying your, those influences, you know, recognizing those artists and go beyond that to look even historically at different movements, what cultures that you personally you know, resonate with doesn't have to be your own culture. I mean, none of my work is like typically American, I should say, but like you look for like analyze why you like something and why you don't like something and what captivates you. So you can, I think people need to, instead of focusing outwardly on everything, right, all the tutorials, all the stuff that we see on Art Station and Trend and, and TikToks, whatever the hell it is, and all the popular people on YouTube, you got to look inward to really get beyond that starter portfolio that just demonstrates you know fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the danger with um, like schooling and education. Not that they're a bad thing, but they a lot of the times they gear you to pump out basically portfolio-ready work, which is great, but in doing so like you said you can identify where it's coming from so it's good to learn those skills but then i think you need to go back and essentially apply the same tasks to a project that is of your own creation that you're more yep. passionate about and you're going to put more love and, and effort into it so i think what i what it's going to come down to is not just knowing technical stuff but like looking deep down to ask yourself like how do you personally want to communicate with your audience because like when you and I were, were just looking at work like everybody else on Instagram on ArtStation there's like certain things that stick out to us there's certain things that resonate us and it's always not just like the raw technical skill like yeah people like a really good it's like kind of marrying the technical with the expressive essentially mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of that is about thinking kind of conceptually as well. And what I mean by that is no, not, not just developing an idea for a building or a jet plane or something like that, but consider, cons like we all have to consider the underlying concepts and the message in our work and what kind of audience that can bring in and how that's going to reflect on us as creators. Like 
how, how can we develop that framework that is essentially going to lead to our own artistic vision? Because that's what a lot of these students' portfolios lack is like a, a higher kind of vision for where mm -hmm. they want to go. Like we have a bunch of work here from various successful artists, right? Like Evan Amundsen, uh, Simon Stalin. Tag. And then, like, uh, you know, there's Scott Robertson out there with his products, and we got, um, you know, Darren Bartley. These are all artists that are extremely competent in their fundamentals, but they have found their own kind of way, you know, to express what they know. And they kind of put their own artistic stamp on a lot of this. Because, like, I, I never get um, new clients, for example, um, with other client work like it's always like they loved my personal work and my personal work comes not from other people are directing me but right like and this is what i talk about with like a lot of students and you got you may remember this from cgma but the ability to art direct yourself to really help develop your artistic vision yeah absolutely i think that um you know, having having the, the, these kind of personal projects i think really helps sell or, or helps you explore your intrinsic voice essentially um mm -hmm. and and really find yourself i think that in other industries too i think that the weird thing is you people start offering you jobs when you're essentially already doing the job and um yeah. i think that that's that's essentially what's lacking is that a lot of students they do exercises and stuff from classes which is great but when you then take that to your own project, like pretend you have your own IP, your own game, your own novel, whatever it is, something that you're passionate about, and then pour the love into that. And that's what all those professionals have done. Like, um, Martin Deschambeau has the Project 77, Tang by Evan yep. Millamunzen. It's just stuff that they worked on, and it's a body of work, it's cohesive, it's essentially a world that we get to dive into. We get to do a deep dive and, um, you know, it, it's something that, that keeps us wanting more because as we dive deeper, we want to know more about the characters or explore, you know, the landscape, that kind of thing. And I think one-off pieces or, or little, um, like, school exercises are not necessarily going to, going to draw. Yeah, it's They're not, not going, going to draw the audience. Over. Exactly, yeah. So I think that that's, it's that storytelling world building that, that tends to fall flat a little bit. And like, and that's why too, like I had just to come back on that thought about like artistic vision, pushing things back that like I have, we have two of your examples from years ago, from back when you had school, when you you were just grinding out, you know, the assignments versus like another professional who goes by the name GXY, not hard, can't make that up, but like it, they're very similar, but they have kind of like that secret sauce that you weren't able to, you know, kind of are, put in into your pieces at that particular stage and i think mm -hmm. even for anyone like it, it's hard to force this you know i'm sure he just kind of does that but there's a difference and it's it's extremely subtle and it's w really woven into the dna of both examples but like you know like once you can see it you can really see it right what do you think is something like students can really work for after establishing a lot of their bases with a fundamental based portfolio like you had yeah, I think consistency and cohesion is a huge thing, um, that, and that, that's that's another area where students tend to fall flat because they might have uh, some strengths in some things and weaknesses in others, and you're sort of, like, you need to focus on bringing up um, your, your lower skills to an acceptable level, but also maybe sort of double down on the things that you're strong um, in as long as you can sort of get away with with that right mm -hmm. um if it's if you're lacking a fundamental that's really going to hold you back then you need to address that but um if one of your strengths is something that will help you stand out and it is that sort of um, those passion projects there's there's something special to your style or, or to your work then you know that's worth exploring further i think right it, it's like to and like you have an artist a very high pro file artist like Loish when she's going from like her early student work where she's like trying to think of what you know like she wants to do for a style and it's a lot of it's forced because she's taking influences like you know like, like she I think she has mentioned like anime obviously Disney and stuff and it, it's still like 
it's almost like a prematurely cooked, you know, soup or sandwich or something like that. Like it, at, you can literally see it mature as she grew and as she developed. There's a, a lot more subtle sophistication that she just couldn't force into it at an earlier stage. And the same like when I do studies and even teach studies, right, with, with like students, it's like, yeah, we can all work from the same uh, point of reference, but our maturity and our experience will allow us to tap into other degrees of subtlety in terms of like, and I think it's just like once you learn the rules, then you can learn, you know, both how to break them and how to like take advantage of them. Like when my six year old <laughs> is playing a game, like a card game with the, the three year old, she knows how to kind of take advantage of those rules because he doesn't know better. And, you know, she'll win every time. It's something like that, like just knowing the the fundamentals and the principles of design to, to like, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm just taking advantage of like line, rhythm, you know, repetition, uh, variety, uh, proportion, and, and trying to make a, an appealing looking picture. And it, it's a mix, you know, I think it, it's tough because like we want to all be truly authentic and that that's something that's hard to do. And it's hard to show when you're portfolio just either has your first personal project that you've ever developed because it or it's just made up of uh, tutorial images or the the third one we're talking about is just like class assignments those are the big the big the three big things to like it, it's it's just obvious once you've been doing it for a while when that's the case and it it just it's like we've been talking about it's going to take that mileage to develop beyond that and the only way is just to keep doing it like this is a i think this field is definitely like a long game sort of play like you have to have patience and luck and everything else we talked about right but we find like with the work that we like a lot because like this is not a one size fits all and i know like when i was a student and i would look at work like all, all these fine creators like we got the zach retzes and, and animation craig mullins of course nathan fox like th these guys know how to bend every rule and i used to like try to like really get in there and analyze uh, every little mark that some of these these guys were making and they know the fundamentals they can literally slap almost anything into there and they can, can they can control you know what they're doing with these marks but like when i see students you know trying to like force expressiveness in a piece it it's tough because like it it just won't either have the structure or won't have a, a unified voice to communicate something you know like a, like a fully developed scene like like zach Ratz, or it won't have like the subtlety of the marks of you know gabriel gomez for example mm -hmm. but like i think we both agree it it's 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 you're, you're at your best when you're letting your personal work really shine and it's not going to be the first personal work you do it's going to be the 20th you know or like the 30th piece like you you went from only having a few props especially over the third over the last two three years you've got now hundreds of props and scenes and you grinded out that mileage like so fast uh do you have anything you wanted to share about like how you approach a problem now versus like you know three years ago yeah i think well first of all it's it's interesting because i i think um the mentality never really leaves you it, in in the sense that I still think I'm I'm at the beginning of the road, <laughs> and I think that's just always going to be the case, um, no matter how much mileage you get through. Um, but I, I find myself now, I think, um, listening to my intuition a little bit more, and there's more times, even with client work, where, you know, if, if something, if direction's a little bit vague or something like that, I'll just... All the time. I'll, yeah, it, it, it often is. And I'll just strike upon an, an idea that I think works or that I like, and I just kind of just say screw it. I'm just going to put it down and and you see what they say. You did that numerous times this week, and it and it yeah. paid off every time you did it. And that intuition, yeah. right, that you tap into, that just took some baseline experience to develop that. Yeah, exactly. I think it's it's weird, especially when you're taking so many classes and things, and you're you're absorbing so much information from other people. It's it's a really hard switch in your brain to to yeah. switch. And just say, you know what, I'm just going to trust myself now. And, you know, I'm going to, it, it's almost like letting go of like the handlebars or something yeah. if you're riding a bike where you're like, I'm just going to um, kind of do my own thing for a moment and see what happens. Put, and put that I targeting think, computer away, Luke. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I think that's definitely 
um, the the key to pushing past that that sort of schoolwork right. look and that the um, you know essentially like the training of it and getting into your your professional work is just um, trusting yourself. Barsha's work here is very creative in all the best ways, but it's constantly being hindered by its technical shortcomings. The lighting and value structure are highly problematic among many of the pieces. For example, when I look at this, I just simply can't tell which direction the light is coming from and what temperature is it. Is it warm? Is it cool? Uh, what's it trying to express? It's just too generalized and lacks any sort of subtlety. I have a few other additional references that are of similar tone and uh, color schemes that you can kind of see here from uh, Art by Wu, Jake Panion, and a few of my own. But when working with lighting, you want to think of it as lighting that you can feel. Even simple low detailed image can have very expressive lighting that can really help elevate your idea to the next level. And that's the same with these two other pieces. They're amazing, they're, they're grand, we're trying to be sold this awesome spectacle vista of a shot here. But again, it's sabotaged by its overall lack of depth, particularly with the lighting. This one as well, uh, the shadows go to a very harsh black, the lightings are overexposed, blown up to a white, and the midtones are kind of all over the place. And you'll see with these other examples, this one here by Kevin Knudsen, right? Like it's a very similar kind of vista shot, but the lighting is very particular set up to really sell that building in the distance that we're looking at. This is just getting overcrowded and overtaken by a lot of these foreground elements. Whereas in this shot, the foreground elements are there to supplement and add to that vista on the horizon. This one down here is just an example of showing you what subtlety you can achieve with a night scene that this one is kind of lacking. Again, you want to balance your exposure, where the texture is, where those little details are. It just needs a lot of those little finer tunely things to get it to that next stage. For Varsha or anyone at a similar level, a good mentor or class on color and light could definitely elevate things a lot quicker. But otherwise, if you're just going to be practicing on your own, I definitely recommend just doing images from studies. So these are kind of simple images. They don't necessarily always have to be one to one, as you can see here, but but keep them to where you can really dive into that reference to see if you could take it and push it beyond, you know, what is there, which is very hard to measure if you're making up scenes constantly from scratch. Being, being truly authentic, that's the, the big yeah. bullet point here, guys. And I just wanted to show some examples with, with my work. Like this, this, these four images are just small samples of like the type um, of work that I do that were all personal, but they're the, the kinds of work that clients refer to me when they, they found me and what they like and they, what they want to hire me for. And it, it's not, again, it's not other client work, no matter what kind of property it was. And it wasn't work like this. And these are just works I feel like I wasn't being as authentic to myself. And they're more by the, the books. I, I mean, they did them in my own way at the end of the day. But like I was trying to learn something with like each of these projects, for example. And it, they're not like, they're not my staple, you know, they're not my go to, they're not like my daily routine type of work. So I, I was out of my comfort zone. I think they're, they're competently done, but I was also trying to fit into like another mold. And so like, I'd have to like really be that mold, I think, if I wanted to really kind of get a lot of work for that stuff. But I mean, at the end of the day, I think, I think this is something most people know is like, you do got to really fill the portfolio with everything you're passionate about and for the work you want to get. But it's also at, at some point, the student work will kind of be much less of a priority and you just have it there. That might be a small conversation point if you're actually, you know, at a meeting or at a at a review or some sort like that. Um, but yeah, I think appeal, right? It, it, it's because it, it, it's hard to get appeal with something that just screams. I did this from a tutorial or or I did this in class. Right. And here's just some last thoughts I, I found just. We, we put this together very quickly, guys, and I know everything we say here, too, is also I'm, I'm aware enough that it's easier said you know, for us to talk about than done because it, it just takes time and, of course, lots of patience. Right. But I think these artists are all really good. They all do. They all do their own thing. But there's you know, it's hard to argue that there is a certain level of, of appeal here that can be achieved right when you once you know you're authentic. Once you are well aware of your own artistic vision for what you want to go about it, like your lens to see the world, um, 
and a lot of that's just interpreting reference and basically less from others and, and their own art. So Tyler, what do you think? I mean, these are just a few examples that I got when it comes to like things that I see that are appealing or, or, or trending well. Art is in the what the eye of the beholder, as they say. It, it's all personal, but with people that are getting work and they're getting work consistently, I think there is it, it is a balance, right, of doing market it's marketability, and again that aesthetic. Do you want? Any other secret ingredients do you think could be added to like a lot of people that and again like we look up to, you will look up to specifically? Yeah, I think that um, ultimately you're you're looking to create an experience for the audience, and in order to to do that again, like just be true to yourself and don't be afraid to to let go of some of the you know whether it be references or even like. Um, if you're trying to emulate um, a certain artist or a studio, obviously, if you're if you're trying to get hired at that studio, you do need to keep that in mind. But also, don't be afraid to just sort of follow your own voice and pull in your own experiences as well. Mm -hmm. um, you look at we looked at Lowish earlier, and it's, it's very apropos. We did not communicate this, but I was just reading um, her book the other day, and she was talking about the Little Mermaid, which is the reference that you pulled up. Yeah. But she's you know her work is very. Um, she she describes it as sort of weightless, like beautiful women who are weightless and very flowy and very emotional. And a lot of that comes from watching The Little Mermaid as a child. And you can see it in her work. A lot of in a lot of her work, the hair is flowing and stuff as if they're underwater. And that comes from her childhood. And so, you know, we've all think about like trips that you've taken to different places and, and that kind of thing your own individual experiences that nobody else has pull some of that into your work and and um yeah don't don't be afraid to lean on yourself and not just others you know all right yeah thank you for helping me go through these these bullet points and these struggles that a lot of you know students are currently having nowadays and it, it is it's 2023 as of the recording of this and it's tough it's a tough market it was a tough year uh with all the layoffs with you know with all the strikes and with everything else there's a lot of people looking for work right now and the the truth the hard truth of it is is like whether you're a student just graduating and, and just starting out we're all in that same kind of internet soup of the same competition pool it is a global market and everyone like when, like when I was starting, I had to compete against people that have been working for 20, 15 years. And realistically, that's what students today they have to compete with full studios, with small studios, and which is you know those solar the, those those solo artists that have been just like doing it for like ever. Um, and mm -hmm. so it's tough to stand out. Um, but again, the other factors, your connections and luck, like, everything can play in your consistency. You just got to stay with it. So, all right. So, but if you guys have any questions for Tyler B or, or or me, feel free to leave them in the comment. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And yeah, give a again. Tyler wants to do some more content for the channel, so if, whatever you guys want to see, let us know. We're open to suggestions. Look, I'm not some world class designer or even industry leader. I have just had moderate success over the last decade, and this is what I did. You just don't stop. If you truly love the craft, you can't lose that hunger for it. It's just too competitive. Actively improve and just find ways to get a little bit better the next time. After all, project after project, you're not only getting better, but you're just improving the chances someone's going to be able to recognize you for those skills. So this is Tyler here. I'll catch you guys next time.